hello everyone i wanted to share an update video about the different journals and planners that i am working with and also some some things that i tried um, to simplify the notebooks that i have um, and how that went so maybe i can start with a couple of journals that i finished recently um this one i started back in april i think april 3rd this is my um, journaling book where i um, write more about like things that are happening in my life i it lasted me from april to june um it's from the think ink brand i got it at myers a local store um where i live and i really i have a few other think ink notebooks i really like their paper for the most part they're pretty durable i did have one experience with one notebook where the cover um, fell off but this one was pretty sturdy uh, the only thing is that i uh, towards the end of its life i ended up pulling this ribbon out because it got stuck in one of my tables but I was able to stick it back in there and, and it looks like it's okay. So um, I really enjoyed using this one. Um, it's just so happened that the two I finished right now are yellow. Um, this one is a pocket notebook that I just uh, throw or kept in my purse. And I used it to like write little things that came to mind when I was in the car or if I was waiting for the train. Uh, waiting for the bus i tried to do some doodling in it um there was another page where i was drawing like a little diagram people usually do um like flip throughs of their notebooks but sometimes i write things that i don't want everyone to like know so i tried a few different things with this one I saw a video by writer Carol, I think is her name, the creator of the bullet journal method, um, where after he finishes a notebook, a uh, bullet journal, he goes through and at the last few pages, he creates a grid to do like a mini index of what the notebook contains, as well as what worked and what didn't work and things that he wants to do differently in his next notebook. I thought about doing that, but sometimes I use um, the last page for like stickers or to do like the sigil that I normally do, which I still um, haven't done in this page. But I enjoyed working with this Field Notes notebook. It got kind of um, beat up over the course of being taken in and out from my bag. So I was thinking about using for my next field notes to put it in a little cover um to help protect it a little more i even purchased an, a bigger purse to accommodate a potential cover so i haven't decided yet anyway i i really like these notebooks they're so bright and colorful i don't normally gravitate towards the color yellow purple is my favorite color um, and I noticed maybe like a few years ago how I really avoided anything yellow. So when I realized that, um, because I also like to learn about the meanings of color and how people can use uh, color to um, affect our energy and like our mood. So yellow was a, a color that is associated with the solar plexus chakra, which is all about your willpower and your own personal power so i used um or i thought about getting yellow notebooks and even some clothing to help me when i was working on um, solar chakra and my own personal power so yeah um so i finished these two <clears throat> to replace my pocket notebook i'm going to be using another fields notes notebook these are the um, great lakes edition i already used one of them um, the michigan one so next i'll be using 
um, Lake Superior. For my daily journaling, I decided to start using this notebook that I purchased, notebook and cover that I purchased in Target in February. It was part of their Black History Month collection and it was a collaboration between Target and, and the Quilters of G's Bend in Boykin, Alabama. I, they actually had this cover as well as a pencil bag and a tote bag. And I, I really like the quilt. Um, so I purchased all three of them and I've been using them. So this one is a gridded notebook that I'm using for journaling, but also I'm using it to do some like mind mapping and like brainstorming for projects that I want to do. I just started it, so it's not um, very full, but this is where I'll be doing my journaling. And a few oldies, but goodies. I'm still doing my one line a day journaling. My, um, this one's kind of have, um, the journal has fallen a lot, so I added some tape to keep it together. Um, I have one more year after 2024, I'll get to do 2025 in this journal and then I'll get to purchase a different one. This one's the one that I keep for my family. So I'll write things that we all did. Um, and it's been really fun to look back at the previous years since now we have like three years in the book. I, when I'm writing what we did, I will share um, and read out the things that we did in previous years. And it's been really great as a record keeping, memory keeping for us, uh, because a lot of times things happen and we wouldn't remember them unless we were reading them in the book or if we had pictures of them. So I really enjoy doing the one line a day journals. Um, I'll leave this one for last. Uh, for planners, I'm using these two. Um, this one is a week's dupe. I have been using it this whole year. Um, it has the monthly pages in the front and then uh, weekly spreads throughout. The way I used it has changed uh, over the year. Like sometimes I spend more time decorating them, the weekly spreads. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I don't check in with it as, as often. But for the last few weeks, I feel like I've been using it a lot and checking in with it a lot. So let's see, this is going back to April. So I just add a few stickers to decorate. I've been trying a habit tracker. And um, so far, uh, this is when I just started the habit tracker. Oh, I guess <laughs> this is when I started the habit tracker. And then I'll just try to decorate it a little bit with like doodles, some markers, just to make it look fun and interesting, but not too crowded. So I have really enjoyed continuing to keep up with this one. And I actually am using this one for more of the planning. So here at the beginning of the month, I'll come to whatever month is next and make a list of different things that I want to do. And um, I was trying out a posting calendar for YouTube and my newsletter, but I actually didn't end up sticking to the schedule. Um, so I've used this one more to look ahead and plan things than um, this other one that I'll show you. This is a Metaphysician's Day Planner by Benabel Wen. And I started using it earlier this year as well. But then I took a few weeks off in May, I think. I just had too many journals that I was checking in with and I was feeling overwhelmed. So I thought, which one can go? And since I have two planners, usually what I do in this one is I'll write what I'm grateful for and then write the things that I do during the day, like dropping off the kids, if I need to stop by anywhere, if I need to call anyone, that's what I'll write in this one. 
and because it felt repetitive with my smaller planner I gave it a two or three week break um, but the part that I didn't replace was the gratitude journaling so I wasn't doing gratitude journaling anywhere and I realized after three weeks of not being more attuned to what I'm grateful for that it was really impacting my my mood and how I was seeing like the things that happened to me day to day uh, so I realized that having a gratitude practice is really a gratitude journaling practice is really important for my mental health and for being able to um, continue with a good outlook about my life throughout the days so I have returned to this one even if it's a little repetitive with the things that I do throughout the day um, what I think I'll do for next year is I probably won't buy this one again although it has really great information here in the back but it's not something that you need every every year um, I'll probably use a week's um, planner for next year because I have another one and then try to do some gratitude journaling here maybe like a one line in addition to the things that I am also keeping track of that way I don't have so many journals to keep up with and then um, this one is my creativity journal that I made um, I have been keeping up with it pretty well I added tabs for each of the months in June I started putting tabs over here on the side um, sometimes I do like a flip through of the previous month um, let me see how many minutes I've been talking uh, maybe I'll do a quick flip through of May yeah so this one is like my fun <laughs> my more fun journal where I get to um, doodle and paste different things in um, use stickers and washi tape and color pencils I also um, do my moon um, check-in at each of the major faces of the moon um, it has like a tracker the, the the drawing and doodling is pretty basic it's just like flowers and spirals and lines and circles um, although I I do want to spend a little more time in the creative interpretation page at the end of the month like here for April I didn't I just did like a, a small a small simple doodle and I tape this sticker from my coffee uh, bag in the moon um, phenology wheel I'll also draw an image that kind of represents what was happening during that day or those few days of the moon phase <clears throat> so these are the pages for May and then we're gonna come up on June pretty soon I did a little collage there so we're in the month of June so I haven't um, done this spread yet I've been coloring in the boxes for the tracker and this is the last week's spread and this is this week's spread yeah so I'm still enjoying this one I realized that there were a couple of uh, one month where there were no pages for one of the weeks so I just have to be more careful for next year's journal I need to count the weeks rather than uh, months I also um, I'm thinking about different things that I want to change or add for next year's journal um, this is around the time that I start thinking about that but I don't have anything concrete yet um, but stay tuned for more on that and I think that concludes the journals that I'm using it's still quite a few and I've shared in previous videos about when I work with each of them so for example this one I will write in in the morning when I'm drinking my coffee 
because it's the gratitude journal. Um, this one I'll write in at night after the day has concluded and I can write about what we did. This one I check in with before work and I'll write in different things that um, like work meetings or other things. And also I will set up the weekly spread either Sunday or Monday morning with different things that I want to accomplish and um, knowing where I'll be working each day and other things that might be coming up. <clears throat> this one is in my pocket or my um, bag and I use it when I'm waiting um, at the train or if I'm in the car or waiting for a meeting to start and I have something that I wanna write. Um, this one I'll write in, um, like if I feel like I have something to share with my future self, I'll write in it at night before bed. And then the creativity journal, I don't check in on it daily, but I'll set up the weekly pages on Sunday night and I'll write in the things I'm reading. If any new books are added to my rotation, then I'll add that. Um, but I'll work on this one after, like during the evening when we're watching a show, after dinner. So um, I think that's how I <laughs> have been able to keep up with all of these journals uh, because they are constantly around me throughout the day and I don't spend more than 10 minutes on any of them, except for this one maybe. Sometimes I'll need like a long writing session. I was thinking about doing a video about like a, a day in the life of my journals, but it's probably gonna take a lot of planning to do it. Um, I've never done a video like that, but um, if you're interested in seeing something like that, let me know. Comments and likes and subscriptions are always appreciated. And thank you for tuning in.